Namaste, angels. This is our weekly general reading for the period of Sunday, January 27th through Saturday, February 2nd. This long ass January will be finally over. I mean, it, we got to January like this <laughs> out of nowhere. All of a sudden we were in January and then it seemed like January never wanted to fucking end. So it's finally ending this week, February 2nd, at least in the United States. Of course, Groundhog Day, the day that we find out if we're going to continue to have winter or not, according to the legend of the groundhog seeing its shadow or not. Um, also on February 2nd is a Christian feast day that I'm going to talk about today, the presentation of the Lord. Why don't we do that right now? Go into www.franciscanmedia.org. At the end of the fourth century, a woman named Etheria made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Her journal discovered in 1887, which is six, a number that represents Mary, gives an unprecedented glimpse of liturgical life there. Among the celebrations she describes is the Epiphany, the observance of Christ's birth, and the gala procession in honor of his presentation to the temple 40 days later. Under Mosaic law, a woman was ritually, quote, unquote, unclean for 40 days after childbirth. There was something that my mother had me do for 40 days or not do, too, uh, after childbirth. I, I don't remember it having anything to, do, anything to do with being unclean, but there was some sort of, like, old ritual or wives' tale or something. I'll have to ask her. In any case, um, a woman at that time was considered unclean when for 40 days when she was to present herself to the priest and to offer sacrifice. Her purification, you know, quote, unquote, purification had to have taken place first. Contact with anyone who had brushed against mystery, birth or death excluded a person from Jewish worship. So this feast emphasizes Jesus's first appearance in the temple more so than Mary's purification. She would have gotten there with the baby. They would have asked um, St. Joseph likely whether she was pure. He would have responded yes. And then they would have taken the baby. Um, the observance spread throughout the Western church in the fifth and sixth centuries. Because the church in the West celebrated Jesus' birth on December 25th, the presentation was moved to February 2nd, which is 40 days after Christmas. At the beginning of the 8th century, Pope Sergius inaugurated a candlelight procession at the end of the same century, the blessing and distribution of candles, which continues to this day, became part of the celebration, giving the feast its popular name, Candlemas. Yes, that is the other name for it. And if you go to a, uh, particularly a Roman Catholic church, you, they may give you a candle. It's like a, you know, long white candle that would, the type that goes into like a candelabra. Um, they probably hand you that the same way they hand out palms and stuff like that. Speaking of them giving stuff out, the following day, which falls into next week's reading, February 3rd, is the feast day of one of my most favorite saints, St. Blaise. And what they'll be giving out that day is blessings of one's throat. If you've ever had, um, you know, some sort of throat affliction, if you are finding, um, having trouble finding your words, right? And you want to like clear your throat chakra. Um, if you just appreciate someone, you know, blessing you, laying hands in, in a way that you feel is positive, and sacred, Go to a Roman Catholic church and you can get your throat blessed, you know, for free, of course. In Luke's account, Jesus was welcomed in the temple by two er elderly people, Simeon and the widow Anna. They embody Israel in their patient expectation. They acknowledge the infant Jesus as the long awaited Messiah. Early references to the Roman feasts dubbed the feast of St. Simeon the old man who burst into song of joy, which the church still sings at day's end. And that was the feast of the presentation or Candlemas. So also coming up this week, cause there's nothing on the Hebrew calendar or the Islamic calendar that I'm going to talk about, but what 
is going on is on the celestial calendar. We have on the 31st at 9.15 a.m. That's, of course, January 31st. Saturn sextile Neptune. So this was something. Normally, I just like Google and I click on the first arbitrary thing. This actually I found in my email. I'm not sure why or from whom I received it via email. But I said, ah, let me, you, I'll just read this. So it is from beliefnet.com. The Astrology of 2009, Part 2. Saturn sextile Neptune. Posted by Matthew Curie. There is sometimes a tendency among astrologers, myself included, to see the more difficult aspects first and to overlook the quieter and more constructive aspects. As I sometimes tell my clients, the news never starts with all the things that didn't blow up today, does it? For all these squares and eclipses and such that one can normally expect in any given year, 2019 will be particularly blessed. The entire year, please, out under the influence of Saturn sextile, I think you mean plays, plays out under the influence. It says please, but that doesn't make sense. Plays out under the influence of Saturn sextile Neptune. Although this aspect has three exact hits in January, June, and November, these two planets stay within about five degrees of the sextile from each other all year long. The trine and the sextile tend to get overlooked. They don't slap you in the face the same way a stressful square or demanding conjunction does. They are quietly constructive. They are the kind of aspects that make things slowly and gently better in the background while the explosions grab all the headlines. Well, not from us, because I go over these sextiles and even semi-sextiles. You guys know that. Saturn sextile Neptune is particularly interesting and a powerful aspect. Saturn is all uptight and into restriction, and Neptune is all loose and spiritual and hippie-like. Normally, these are two planets that you wouldn't sit next to each other in a dinner party. But when they get to their act together and work on the same goal as they will in 2019, this can be a time for overcoming both inner and outer boundaries with kindness, gentleness, and spirituality. And yet, you can still achieve solid, lasting, and practical results. That's the Saturn part, right? Have you gotten lazy with your spiritual practices? Do you understand the higher reason why you're striving toward your material goals? Saturn sextile Neptune can help you to sort all that out in 2019. Now, just in case you were afraid that I'm losing my edge in my old age, fear not. Next time, we'll get back to the more tense things happening in 2019. Just remember that Saturn sextile Neptune can help you to overcome all of it and to come out better than ever. So I think Saturn sextile Neptune is something that we can look forward to. And it's the last thing that I'm going to talk about this weekend. So let's get to our dice. I'm beginning with, yes. Yes. Spend money. Spend money. And stay in bed. Maybe we're meant to spend money on like a hotel room or something. Um, vacation, a break is what I'm feeling. Spruce says no. <laughs> so you might be saying no, that's not what I mean. No, I think I, I really felt that to be honest. Um, so that's just like a nose for like a yes or no question that you may have been pondering. Party. Happy birthday to anybody in, in the Aquarians celebrating or any other reasons for partying yay for you <laughs> Ooh, and sex okay maybe that goes with the party too ah speaking of recovery you know what let me put on my rings let's get some more energy going here put on my stones i took advantage of the fact that my malachite had come off 
and I have put on my Gym Quality Amethyst and of course Sterling Silver. All right. All in tune and whatnot, right? <laughs> yeah, speaking of um, recovery and possible vacation. I forgot I was starting with the four of air. Time to rest or take a vacation. Allow more time before making a decision. Meditation may provide answers. So this can be about recovering, getting your energy back, getting yourself back together, um, recouping from a situation. Uh, for those that were affected by the government shutdown in the United States, for example, this can be you getting back to day to day, what day to day, whether you work directly, um, you know, for the federal government and were impacted in that way, or you're a contractor or you received some sort of social services that were in limbo, um, or being rejected by different stores and things, or, um, you know, your client base was having financial problems because they are, you know, they were directly affected, whatever the case is, many of us could be, you know, getting back to normal or trying to get back to normal after that. And also there's going to be financial recovery, right? Because initially the president, so-called president, he ain't my president, had rejected um, the proposal to pay back pay to anyone during the um, shutdown. And today, it was announced that they would in fact, back pay would in fact be paid. It's still in limbo for people who are contractors of the federal government as opposed to direct federal employees. But you know, again, people are recovering. So that's definitely a possibility of why this four of air um, is with what we are beginning. An opening to the dreamer, major arcana card zero, a leap of faith, follow your dreams, that leads to unexpected opportunities. So this can be called telling you to go ahead and take a break, go on vacation, um, or start something new. Like, you know what? Maybe that shutdown was an eye opener. C continue to work, right? Nobody's telling you not to go to work, but maybe you want to start moonlighting on your own thing so that the next time it happens, you won't need to go back. You'll just be, you know, thriving in your own company. There's all kinds of things coming out right here with this message. The dreamer for me represents the planet Mercury, at least in this deck, right? It's the fool in the traditional tarot. In this deck, it represents the planet Mercury, ruler of Gemini, which could be from where all this air is coming. Um, the president, again, so-called president, is in fact a Gemini, sadly. <laughs> He's not very smart, and Geminis tend to be um, pretty intelligent. He's not one of them. So, um, uh, you know, he's probably some kind of cuspian or something. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Um, but something, yeah, something's wrong, obviously. In any case, he is a Gemini, so that can be from where this is coming. Um, Mercury is also a ruler of Virgo. So this card re representing Virgo for me, too. The Dreamer. And the Page of Water. Intuitive, sensitive, artistic, and friendly. A new person enters your life. A relationship begins a new phase in their heightened psychic abilities. Well, that could definitely be the case with the Dreamer. The, again, Major Arcana Card Zero is all about a brand new path. So a new phase, new path. Um, this can be you meeting somebody. Maybe specifically a Gemini or a Virgo meeting somebody. Perhaps that person is specifically a water sign. A Pisces, like Neptune right, where the sextile is going to be. Um, and the page tends to represent the more youthful of an energy for me, of an element. So it would be Pisces. But um, that person can also be Scorpio, Cancer, or, you know, or any sign, really. And if so, maybe they are younger, right, than you, whatever your sign is. This can also be um, relative to a child, some sort of new beginning with a child, maybe giving birth this week. Maybe becoming pregnant this week, right? You're getting news that you are pregnant. Pages bring news. It'll be a new path for you to become a parent or a parent again. Zero. And speaking of Gemini, it is the queen of air, independent, experience, realistic and witty, objective decision-making, clearing away all that no longer serves you and seeing the humor in the situation. The queen of air is indeed a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. She may be somebody who is a very confidently, um, and perhaps independently, on her own, about to walk down this brand new path. 
very fearlessly. She is strong, you know, she's independent. She is um, you know, very matter of fact and no nonsense and <sighs> fair, diplomatic open to looking at all the different possibilities and sides and perspectives of a situation, a person. You know, so she's good for a brand new path. She's like fit for it. She's built for it. I'll do one more. It is Major Arcana card number 13, release. So again, letting go of the old path because we're about to walk a brand new one. The end of a phase or situation. Spiritual transformation is also possible. And... This reminder that it's time to move on from whatever has been. Major Arcana card 13 release is death in the traditional tarot and represents the sign of Scorpio. So again, there could be something going on between uh, a an older air sign, and maybe specifically Gemini, and a younger water sign, and maybe specifically Scorpio. They need to let. They may need to let go of their past in order to move on to something new. I had said that I was going to only do one more, and then I opened again to now major arcana card. The Hermit. Spend time in quiet meditation, spiritual teaching, self discovery. The Hermit represents the sign of Virgo, which I mentioned in the, in the beginning in connection to the Fool, or which is called the Dreamer in this deck that I said represents Mercury for me, ruler of Virgo and Gemini. So that may still be the case. Mercury, busy. Um, the Hermit is about introspection, the need to go within and to figure things out. It can be about enlightenment, whether you come into enlightenment that way by going within or someone else helps you to become enlightened or teaches you something. The Hermit can represent a lawyer, judge for me, a teacher, like a professor, and can be someone... Um, again, who helps someone else to see the light, as they say, too. Queen of Air. That Queen of Air still sticking up. She may have to choose between a water sign and an earth sign. And again, maybe more specifically, a Scorpio and a Virgo. So here we are with the three of water. So some kind of party of three could be happening. A celebration, a wedding, graduation, or a birth announcement. They need to have fun, more fun. Those are possibilities too. She might need to just be more social. Um, or somebody may need to be more social, whoever that queen of air represents. It can be a male, it can be the masculine also. You know, it's not definitely not uh, gender or archetype specific. Uh, the three of water, on a more positive note, is about reunions too. So it could be um, coming back into contact with somebody, old friend, romantic interest, family member, somebody that, you know, you're happy about seeing again. It can be about finding out you're pregnant or giving birth this week, right? That's a cause for celebration. Overall energy is the seven of fire. Defend your beliefs and decisions. Stand your ground. Choose your battles wisely. Crown of the Masculine this week. It is the three of Earth, speaking of parties of three. The power of creativity, recognition for very high quality work and be a team player. So I already mentioned not only party potential party of three, but potential party of three involving a Virgo. 
uh, and or a water <laughs> or a Scorpio or water sign. So this is more evidence of that. But uh, you know, on a more positive note, three of Earth is also about abundance that is earned. Threes in general about creativity, so you could be coming up with creative ways to bring about abundance to yourself. This could be something that's going on at your job. You could have. Um, you know, involve some sort of relationship with your job, whether it's a romantic one or a friendship, a project, you know, group project that you're working on with other people. Um, but again, if it's about abundance, it can be promotion, raise, um, you know, some sort of new opportunity, recognition, accolades, praise, an award, you know, any number of things like that, that you're, you're getting the benefit of you know your work basically you you earned the recognition that you're getting masculine surrounded by the queen of water tender-hearted empathetic patient and loving and does represent the sign of scorpio like specifically the queens um in you know of a given element tend to in the tarot represent the fixed sign and scorpio would be the fixed sign of the water element um, but of course, this can be a Cancer or Pisces also, or any sign. Relationships develop to a new level. Trust your intuition. Care for yourself and others. The Queen of Water is tenderhearted, empathetic, patient, and loving. Again, she can be a party potentially to some sort of party of three involving maybe an Earth sign and specifically a Virgo and a Scorpio. Um, masculine subconscious, the ace of water, falling in love, or the resurgence of a relationship, spiritual growth, and enhanced intuition, maybe even a new home. So new home could be certainly something that we earned, the asset that we're getting, something that we're going to just fall in love with. We love this home. It is, you know, is very emotionally fulfilling to us. We have a, a you know, a, strong attachment um, to this new home. It can still be a baby, the birth of a baby, a third among you, right? A third party, man, woman, baby. Um, this can be a new relationship, maybe with somebody from your job, a new romantic relationship, somebody you met at work. It can be a new opportunity for you at work that you're also going to fall in love with or be, you know, very emotionally, um, you know, like touched by the fact that you've gotten this new opportunity. Crown in the feminine, however, is the nine of air, expecting the worst, self-fulfilling prophecies and sleepless nights. The nine of air is about the potential to manifest negativity and lack into your own life with your own pessimistic, dark, you know, negative thoughts. It can be also about the need to get some rest, like you've just, you're exhausted. And I'm feeling that that is the case for some. It's just they need, they need to go to bed. Um... Or at least rest your mind. Maybe your mind's been too busy. Maybe you've been trying to figure out, again, how to feed your family and stuff under a recent stressful time and stuff like that. And now you need to, you need to let your mind rest. Um, for others, yeah, definitely watch that possibility to bring negativity into your own life by your thoughts. If you see any multiple ones and stuff, you see that 11-11, don't say, oh, I got to make a wish or all oh, twin flame or whatever. No. Let me tell you what the multiple ones is. It is an alert. It's the universe saying, hey, you, watch your thoughts and the words you speak over yourself, you know, because you, you're in the process or you're in a space of manifestation. And that's when you want to, that's when you, it's trying to remind you to turn, you know, any thoughts that are running through your head around to the positive. So, be, so you don't do this. You don't manifest negativity into your own life. Coming in surrounded by the page of air, logical Honest, impulsive, and curious, challenging information, delays or changes to plans, and truth delivered without tact. So again, this worry could have come from, you know, that very famous but unpopular Gemini in the White House. <laughs> um, 
or for others, this could just be representing Mercury that causes delays, causes us to have sometimes pessimistic thoughts, to overthink, to overanalyze. This can be, um, you know, another Gemini that's actually in your life or somebody with, um, you know, air sign qualities that's actually in your life. Because court cards can represent actual people. They often do. And, you know, that person's giving you pause, giving you things to think about, maybe make you, even making you a little bit nervous or anxious. Or something they say. Makes you nervous or anxious. Pages, again, bring news. But we want to keep our thoughts positive. We don't want to bring anything bad upon ourselves. Feminine subconscious. The king of air. Brilliant, impartial, professional, and diplomatic. Speak your mind with confidence. Seek out professional advice and balance mental and emotional considerations. It's mirroring the ace of water. If this is a man that is coming into your life, he is going to be um, the type of person that like he is who he is. You know, like air signs are very, you know, sterile. <laughs> We're just very, you know, you just gotta accept him um, as he is, he's not the type of person to be changed, but he's a, he's a good man. And whether he's an earth sign and I'm an earth sign, an air sign or not, um, which he quite possibly is a direct air sign. If you're not, um, you both may be actually, um, he is, he can be very opinionated maybe even stubborn to a fault. So those things you're going to want to you know, work on communication with him. And, and that's going to be fine because this is somebody who can, who's capable of communication and air sign. Um, certainly don't let him walk over you, particularly with this overall energy of the seven of fire, defend your beliefs and decisions, stand your ground, choose your battles wisely. So don't let him walk over you. Don't let him mistreat you. But, um, his nature is probably very, to be very strong and forceful and opinionated. Um, and we all have not only all Zodiacs, but all people, all beings, you know, they, they have a, a positive and a negative. They have a, a good and bad. They have a light and dark, you know, so... He, in some cases, the king of air may like even walk the line and, you know, because we air signs can be so sterile, you know, um, I feel, I just feel that for the most part, he's a good person. He's a, this is a good man and he may be a judge. He may be a lawyer, but I, I went right away to, um, the romantic, I guess, possibility because I, he's here mirroring the ace of water. But again, the Ace of Water can be about a new home, a new something too. Um, and so he could be a facilitator of that. He could be a realtor, a judge, a lawyer uh, as well. When I picked up the Seven of Fire, by the way, I just want to mention the Seven of Earth is also there. And so like we put, we've put um, what we needed to into the groundwork for what we're trying to accomplish, whether it's a relationship a home, whatever it is, a job, we've put, we've done the groundwork. And so even if it doesn't look like it's taking form, we need to not worry, right? Seeds well planted. There may be a temporary pause in action. Maybe it's delayed caused by the page of air, but any worry is unnecessary. That's what the seven of earth says. Just be patient. Because the opportunity is still coming your way, whatever it is. The Ace of Fire, an exciting new opportunity. Maybe career advancement. Could be a relationship too. In any case, change your life now with this new wonderful opportunity that's there for you. He's also mirroring the Three of Earth. Um, 
And in that case, he couldn't be somebody at your job that you think is like busting your balls or whatever. But really, he's just giving, he's just doing his job. He's just, and he's, it's, it's his personality as an air sign, or at least um, his, you know, his work personality, what he shows at work. It's, again, that very just sterile sort of thing. So he, he's not busting your balls. Um, he's very likely telling you, informing you about things that you need to know. Um, and like telling it like it is. Very honest and matter of fact. And um, you're just going to need to look at him through that lens in order to get a better understanding of, of the kind of person that he is. Crowning. The king of earth, a generous, professional, responsible, and practical. The king of earth, be about that abundance that you earn coming your way. This can be a facilitator of it. Uh, he may be a Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus. This could be representing Saturn. And we just read about that um, Saturn and, and Neptune. This is here crossing. Saturn and Neptune sextile all year long. That's going to be beneficial to us. So we have this Earth energy crossing this water energy. That can totally represent that. The king of Earth is generous, professional, responsible, and practical. A successful time. Confidently accept opportunities you're offered. You have the Midas touch. So a job or something could come your way to feminine, an op a financial opportunity, a material opportunity, or um, you know some sort of interaction with somebody very generous, maybe a direct um, earth sign that wants to, you know, help you out or, or something. Maybe you, you need that person. You've been waiting on that person. You've been expectant maybe even of that person, but they've been delayed and they're, they're, it comes through this week. You definitely need to let go of, again of the worry though, because that can continue to block. You may be getting in your own way, blocking your own blessing, preventing him. Your energy may be preventing this from coming through. Um, I mean, like, talk about creating your own reality. You know what I mean? At the root, foundation. From where did this shit start? It is the page of water. Intuitive, sensitive, artistic, and friendly. A new person enters your life. A relationship begins a new phase. And also there are heightened psychic abilities when this card shows up. The page of water represents, for me, the sign of Pisces, first and foremost, which is, in fact, ruled by Neptune. But it can also be um, Scorpio or Cancer or somebody who's not at all a water sign. Um, or maybe like a water rising or moon and not sun sign. Can be about um, yeah, meeting new people or new uh, offers of love and emotion. Phone call, text, contact, a card introduction can have something to do with a child again somebody could be getting birth or finding out that they're pregnant at the heart of the matter major arcana card balance with archangel zadgale the need for balance and moderation cooperation and compromise wait for perfect timing major arcana card balance number 14 is temperance in the traditional tarot, which represents the sign of Sagittarius, and um, which is ruled by Jupiter. All right, so this is Jupiter to the rescue. When temperance shows up, it also is connected to the sign of Aquarius for me, because there almost always tends to be a water bearer on the card, like whatever deck you're using. Uh, like this angel here standing in this pool of water, pouring water back and forth between two vessels. That's a water bearer. Um, temperance is about two like opposing forces like Saturn and Neptune coming together, like to work harmoniously, figuring out a way that they can come together to work harmoniously. So somebody at your job, he, his personality is not like yours. 
and you don't necessarily get him at first, but you can figure out a way to come together to work productively to make some money, right? You can get the, you can still get a bag together, especially once you understand where he's from, where he's coming, right? Or as far as a romantic interest, you know, one is, I was explaining Gemini and Scorpio, which is mirrored here too, right? I said, this is Scorpio and this is like Gemini for me. Um, I was explaining Gemini and Scorpio to a fellow Gemini male that asked me um, about them the other day. I, I announced on my page that I was making plans uh, with my girlfriend to go on a cruise. And I said, you know, Gemini and Scorpio, at, um, you know, action or something like that. And he said, you think uh, Geminis and Scorpios have, you know, get along well, have good relationships? I said, oh, yeah. I said, I know what, the, what astrologers may say, uh, especially about romantic relationships between the two. Um, but really, from my observation and experience, this is the issue. The Scorpio, um, before they really get to know the Gemini, right, um, tends to feel because that the, they are the only one of the two that's on this really deep, you know, level plane. They're way beneath the surface. And Gemini is superficial, super superficial to Scorpio because they're misreading them, right? So when they think that you ain't about nothing, that you're just superficial, it's when there's a major clash because they need the deep connection. When they get to realize what your true personality is underneath and the Geminis are super deep. It's just that we typically don't let anybody in that far. If we do, it's because we are feeling some real emotion for you. And when a Gemini loves you, like there's nothing like it. And that all the astrologers will say when, you know. Uh, Gemini is going to be loyal and dedicated and nurture. And, you know, when, once we, once we go all the way in like that. Um, so that's the part that's, that's where the problem comes in. But if you can figure out how to get to know each other, right. And how to begin to see the, the innermost parts of one another and to understand that we're so much alike, really, um, when once you really begin to delve into it, that's where the compromise comes in. And if anybody or anything can help you to do that compromise, it's Jupiter. Or apparently for this year, it's Saturn and Neptune. I'm going to further clarify these though. Speaking of the king of winter with yet another king of winter. Intelligent, impartial, respected, and unemotional. See, that's the thing. Unemotional, and then somebody who's super emotional, at least when they go deep within. At this time, it's very important that you communicate clearly, be objective and unemotional, and act as professionally as possible. If you need advice, seek out the most experienced expert that you can find. The king of water, again, is a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. And boom, right away. Who's that? That's the king of winter, right? Who's that? That's the princess of summer, right? King of winter. Princess of summer. Sensitive, kind, open-hearted, inexperienced. You can expect to kindle a new romantic relationship or a close platonic friendship. You may suddenly receive an emotional message from someone or be invited to a social event. The princess of summer is a Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. Princess of summer. The 10 of winter. It's the end of a career path, project, or relationship. And that brings up feelings of mixed joy and sadness, relief and disappointment. Put aside your fears about these changes and trust that a brighter future awaits. 
So maybe you, they were like you weren't getting along before. And that period of phase of not getting along is ending because you figured out how to come together now. Whether it's to come together to say, you know what, we don't need to ever come together again. <laughs> or it's to come together to start, you know, a new path walking together forward. Um, you know, it gets figured out one way or another. Ten of winter. <sighs> Who's that? It's this. This three of earth. All right, here's another one. Your most satisfying and profitable career or relationship comes from following your passions, listening to your heart and doing what brings you joy. So for example, again, I don't care what the astrologers say, what does your heart say? Does it say you belong with a Gemini and you're a Scorpio? Two of my best girlfriends are Scorpios, the one I was making the plan with. My mom is a Scorpio. My DM is a Scorpio. My baby's a Scorpio. We get along great if you ask me. You know, I, I'm surrounded by them. Now, I do have a, a chunk of Scorpio in my chart. And my mother used to, I mean, there's an old saying that, you know, all Scorpios find each other, including like somebody like me that just has it in their chart like that. So, I mean, that could be too why... Um, for me, it works, but I, I think it, it's what I told you the first time, you know? Um, so like, it's like, screw what the Zodiacs say and what all the, you know, fancy pants astrologers say. My heart says this. So that's what I'm going to follow. And that's going to be the case, whether it has to do with work, relationships, you know, love, romance, friendship, whatever. Your most satisfying and profitable career or relationship comes from following your inner passions, listening to your heart and doing what brings you joy. Your life purpose is best fulfilled by allowing your talents and, and true self to shine forth out into the world. See, that's another thing. Scorpios are very reserve and you know and like conservative as it relates to themselves and letting people get to see you know who they are but so are gemini's i mean yeah we'll give you now, now that's probably from where the scorpios get the superficial stuff we'll give you the surface stuff but very few people get to know a gemini like you know on that deep level so ten of winter and speaking of Gemini, the queen of winter now. Experience self-sufficient, brilliant, and funny. All of your life experiences have prepared you for this moment of truth. It's time to declutter your home, clear away situations that aren't working for you anymore, and to disengage from people who create more drama than happiness. The queen of winter, like the king and the page, is a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. <laughs> and that brings us now to the sixth of winter. The challenging times are coming to an end and you can now breathe a sigh of relief. Let go of the past and embrace the happier times ahead. This could be about travel, like literal travel or moving. Um, but if it's not, you know, worst case scenario, it's figurative travel, figurative moving forward into calmer, stiller waters. Atop the three of earth, it is 
another three of Earth. Essentially, it's Major Arcana card three, which represents the planet Venus, ruler of the sign of Taurus. There's your Earth, um, Libra. And Gemini, yet again, more air too. Time to hop into action. Use your natural creativity to bring forth prosperity and success in your life. This is about abundance. And uh, threes are about creativity. They are about um, coming up with creative ways to help to bring about your own abundance. They can both be about some sort of party of three. The Empress can be a very, you know, beautiful woman. Um, she can be a mother. So she can be representative of uh, the masculine's mother or like the mother of his children with these pages, you know, the of, of cups continuing to show up too. Um, and the Ace of Cups can be about, again, the birth of something new or someone new, an actual baby. Um, can be about him being rewarded again for his creativity for his unique idea or ideas and this can be about a new path also so maybe like a promotion a new job a new avenue he is surrounded atop the queen of water the six of autumn, six of earth, your success and prosperity have allowed you to pay off debts, right? Because all this abundance is coming towards you, right? Acquire wise loans and to receive a grant or a scholarship in return for heaven's blessings. Be sure to share the wealth with others through donations of time or money to reputable charities. So a nurturer, a queen of water, someone, you know, like her would do that. We'll be happy to do that. But this can also be about donating and to charity and stuff is unconditional love. It's giving of yourself, you know, without expecting something in return, without an agenda. So just if we're, if we're exchanging love and nothing, um, you know, tangible, just exp exchanging energy, it's still um, unconditional love. Atop the Ace of Water, it's the Three of Spring. Stop to take time to review and to make long-term plans, capitalizing upon your past successes. Right? It's appropriate to pat yourself on the back for all your accomplishments, but you may also need some patience in order for the next phase to play out. Right? There could be a delay. Atop the nine of air and what the feminine is worried about, some sort of partnership, you're falling in love or experiencing a deepening of emotion in your current relationship. Marriages or romantic partnerships in distress can also still be saved. Don't give up. Atop the page of air. <laughs> it's the king of summer. Warm-hearted, devoted, loving, and faithful. A trustworthy person or relationship enters your life. You may receive wise and compassionate advice from someone who speaks directly from the heart. And atop the king of air is the ten of spring. You're working far too hard and the stress will soon become too much. Reach out for help from others and take some time to play and to enjoy life. And this position, you know, both of these cards in the feminine's mind, basically. Um, so she's like stressing herself out with her overanalyzing and her worry and whatever about what looks to be a very beautiful um, partnership, if not romantic relationship or opportunity for one. Atop the king of earth, the four of summer, speaking of opportunity, your responsibilities may distract you from noticing one, you know, and all of God's gifts that he's presenting to you. Be open to investigating opportunities that come your way. Like don't look past one, check them all out. Atop the page of water. It's like another page of water, kind of. His major arcana card, 18, the moon, which represents the sign of Pisces, again. So that's like the same thing as the page of water, only stronger. 
um, Pisces ruled by Neptune. So more of that. It's important to trust your intuition, even if you're unsure of what's happening. All will be revealed soon. So worry is unnecessary. And at the heart of the matter, a top major arcana card balance or temperance, it is the princess of autumn. Cheerful, reliable, intelligent, and mischievous. A wonderful opportunity related to your work or education, such as a promotion, as I've been saying the whole time, a scholarship, something like that is coming your way. Seize this chance to learn something exciting or to start a more rewarding and uplifting career yourself. So I think I also mentioned that, right? It may be a time for people to um, start some moonlighting and looking into ways that they can work for themselves. <sighs> the masculine here can be feeling really undeserving of whatever's coming his, his way, which can be love. Um, it's abundance, you know? So love is just a form of abundance. I mean, let me say it's abundance coming his way um, and in some cases although he's earned it um, whether by doing works for the universe and his good karma and stuff like the Jupiter um, that showed up here in the middle with the temperance card healing energy of the universe um, he's either earned it in that sense or he's earned it through his actual labors down here on this plane and that he's receiving some sort of abundance love money the material combinations of those all of the above and just not feeling worthy of it the feminine again, um, something very, something, <laughs> perhaps someone very positive coming her way too. And she needs to use this opportunity to have a change of mind and heart and don't let the opportunity pass her by. Like, you know, deciding whether to sit it out or dance, um, to go with what the universe is guiding you to do or to, um, you know, instead go with your own free will. That's the question being posed to her. This moon atop the page of water, um, definitely telling you to pay attention to your intuition and the guidance uh, that is being shown to you rather than to your free will and rather than, um, you know, sitting it out. But the universe would never deny you the opportunity to do that anyway. It's saying, this is what I would have you do, but you still can choose which one you want. Um, this, the moon and a combination of the moon and the page of cups can also be about like not wanting to see the truth for what it is, trying to, you know, avoid it. And maybe like fighting again, your own personal truth, fighting what's in your heart. And so, you know, definitely guided to stop doing that <laughs> this week. Once again, with my angel therapy cards, I'm beginning with be willing to forgive. Ask the angels to clear your mind and body of past pain in exchange for peacefulness. Okay. And opening to cut your cords. Ask Archangel Michael to clear any old attachments to fear that stem from past relationships. Right, that can definitely be what this, what this is with the feminine that's like potentially holding her back, weighing her down, right? It's a burden that she needs to let go so she can enjoy life and love that's coming here for her. All right, so let go of the past, um, the hurt from past relationships, freeing you from destructive patterns. Exactly. Archangel Michael, the sword, like the king of swords that has shown up several times here, um, here to help you with that. You're working very closely with this powerful archangel who's protecting you and guiding you through the situation. Archangel Michael, vacuum away fear. Call upon your archangels, Michael and Raphael, to lift fear-based energy from you. So moon is about... Um, your surroundings, the situation, and everyone involved, but also solar plexus chakra. It's safe for you to be powerful and to take charge of your life in positive ways. Archangel Michael. I don't know why I keep opening two. Throat chakra. Maybe you guys got to get your throat blessed again. I'm <laughs> the third. Um, so I mentioned it this week just in case I did, didn't 
prepare or upload or reveal next week's reading in time for you to go to, you know, get your throat blessed for any, for those who want to, again, it is at February 3rd at any Roman Catholic church in the world should be, um, honoring St. Blaise. The angels are helping you to lovingly speak your truth and you're a powerful light worker. It's safe for you to be powerful. Your spiritual power brings great blessings in loving service to the divine. Heal away addictions. It's time to let go of behaviors that are blocking you from your heart's desire. And this can also be the feeling that I'm getting from the masculine too, about like being down on himself, like feeling that he's not deserving. That's a feeling that's blocking you from your heart's desire too. Like screw that. <laughs> um, especially if it has to do with people, like with a relationship, you might not feel deserving, but if this, you know, gorgeous woman, the empress, um, you know, wants you, loves you, go for it. Like stop blocking yourself from, from being with her. If you want her, she wants you. Just get the silly thought out of your head that you don't, that you don't deserve it, that you're not worthy of her. She feels you are, you know, it's that sort of thing. Um, time to let go of those behaviors that are blocking you from your heart's desire and ask Archangel Raphael to help you with this healing. Overall energy, once again, solar plexus chakra. It is safe for you to be powerful and take charge of your life in positive ways. Further advice specifically to the masculine, books. Your life purpose involves writing, reading, editing, or selling spiritually based books. That could be what's here with the Princess of Autumn. That may be how you find your healing. Some sort of book that can help you through your situation or by writing your things, you know, your own thoughts down a journal or something. Maybe what this is talking about, maybe writing an actual book, right? Putting all your thoughts, compiling them and then providing something to other people that can help other people. This is what I went through. You know, if you experience this, then maybe you, you know, want to consider doing what I did or not, you know, don't consider what I did. Let, let me be the example of what not to do, all those sorts of things. Um, friend of mine, male friend, male Scorpio, um, born uh, November 13th. He is reading some sort of spiritual book relating to love and relationships by Osho. I, he, I asked the name of it. I'm, I think he told me, but I don't remember what it was, but like that, I was just reminded about that. That could be something too. Um, for the feminine past life issue. Yeah. That's why you got this hang up, but you got to get over it and yourself. The situation has a basis in one of your previous lifetimes. Ask the angels to help you remember so that you can release and learn from it and heal the past experiences from the angels. To the masculine, the lovers, a second lovers, right? The lovers, where were they? Oh, when I was shuffling, right? Oh yes, yes, when I was shuffling and in this placement, that's why I'm looking for them here in the, the reading that I did for my patrons, the weekend reading and, and the daily for Friday. Intimate relationships, carefully weigh your decisions, good health. Um, the lovers <laughs> here, um, shows up with Archangel Raphael, who's just been mentioned several times with the angel therapy cards, uh, and also the sign of Gemini yet again. And this can be about uh, choosing what makes sense and what's in your heart, or what you think makes sense, what society dictates and what's in your heart. What, you know, somebody else would have you do, what's in your heart. It can be a tug of war between your heart and your head when the lover shows up a choice to make. Of course, it can just be about beautiful love too. Um, and again, like I felt love coming the way of the masculine, some sort of abundance coming his way. Feminine for us, the two of earth, too much going on at once. There is a need to make a decision. Consider a more playful approach. We got three cards here that would suggest that we are in balance. Temperance, the two of earth and the 10 of spring. 
So that's for one thing that we got to work on. This can also be about a decision that we have to make, choosing between two different, um, maybe opposing forces. Uh, it can also be a choice between work and play and like needing to find balance um, also in that area. Like I'm working too much, I need to find some time to be social. Or I'm being too social, I got to get back to business and my family. And stuff. So whatever applies to you. And from the animals <laughs> to the masculine, Major Arcana Card 7, the chariot, which represents the sign of cancer. You can successfully balance various or opposing energies. That's what I've been talking about. Opposing forces, figuring them out, making them come together, like temperance helps us to do. This, this chariot card says to the masculine, again, that you can definitely do this. And the way that you can do it is through determination and focus. You've earned the rewards that you're getting. This is like a summary of everything I've been saying. And the recognition that you're receiving, you've earned it. Major Arcana card, the chariot, um, is about moving forward. Like our overall energy, the six of winter, whether it's figurative moving or it's actual moving. It can be about travel too. Vacations, like the six of winter can be. So again, whether it's figurative or you know, metaphorical or it is literal for you, it is positive. It is victory. It is forward moving energy. It is growth. It is expansion. It is, you know, things being worked out. It is opposing forces coming together harmoniously somehow once you figure out, you know, how to do that. But by, by putting some focus and attention toward it. Very nice. And feminine. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, we've got two twos of autumn. You may be under stress because of multiple jobs or too many responsibilities for one person to manage. It's important to balance your work and your personal life and to bring a spirit of fun to all that you do. Some of us may also be experiencing deja vu from hell. And that's going to be tied to this past life relationship um, issue also. The reason it keeps coming around, it's some sort of generational you know, karma. And we have to cut the cord to that. We've got to break the cycle. And so until we do, it keeps coming back around. Work on it. <laughs> Release it once and for all. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the weekly reading. I'll be back with love. Namaste.